Oh. Rotarians and guests, I have the delightful honour of introducing our next guest speaker, Rob Mottram, to talk to you about the history of Mottram biscuits. And as Rajiv has already mentioned, both David and Rob have worked tirelessly on this talk today. And uh, David might pop up later to answer any of your tricky questions. Um, David and Rob, I think, would all agree are part of royalty, uh, Rotarian royalty. Um, their grandfather and father were both members of this club. They've both made significant contributions, far too many to mention. But David is a trustee of the CTF and a leader of the Magic Show for many years, one of our largest fundraisers for a, a great cause. And Rob was our 75th president and is known for planting the 2,500 trees, I think with his own bare hands, in the Rotary Forest in the South Park lands. Now I'm told Rob always ended his meetings with a joke, so I hold out high hopes for our giggles at the end of his talk today. No pressure. So please welcome Rob Watcham to the stage. Technology. Something I've had to learn lately, um, and I have to say I thank my son and daughter who've been um, quite good at helping not only myself but spending many hours with my wife. Um, so thank you, Gildy, for that very kind introduction. Um, President Rajiv, Rotarians and guests. Our great-great-grandfather, John Philip Mottram, arrived in Melbourne, Australia in 1861. He then sent up a, set up a solicitor's office in Sandhurst, close to Bendigo. Three years later, 1864, his wife and five sons arrived in Australia and joined John at Sandhurst. One of his sons, Cecil Augustus Mottram, brilliant looking fellow, our great grandfather, after leaving school, worked in his father's office and was known to deliver summonses on horseback in Ned Kelly country. After a period of time, I think he must have got sick of that, he left Bendigo and arrived in Adelaide in 1875. Here he joined the office of the Aerated Bread and Biscuit Company and became assistant manager in 1888. He married the boss's sister, sensible thing to do, <laughs> Ada Elliott, on the 29th of March 1881 and lived on a farm in Finden. The farm was part of the business as it supplied milks, milk, eggs and other ingredients for the factory. Ada was a wonderful support for Cecil, always helping people in one way or another. On one occasion she made jam and decided to take some to the wife of their country traveller, who they employed, only to be greeted by the traveller himself, who should have been in the country. Anyway, in, by 1881, Cecil was manager of the company, whose products included pilot bread, cabin bread, Adelaide biscuits, Abernethy biscuits, arrowroot biscuits, and bush biscuits. Some of you might remember them in the uh, bars at the uh, behind our Parliament House. So. Uh, Cecil Mottram and fellow employee Edward Williamson, who was the engineer for the company at the time, took over the business in 1884 and Mottram and Williamson soon became South Australia's leading biscuit manufacturer, 
occupying imposing premises in Weymouth Street, Adelaide. The partnership continued until 1908. One of the labels from one of our biscuits tins. Well, um, Cecil, Cecil Mottram, then as managing director, formed. Oh, sorry, in 1908. Uh, after 1908, I gather there was a bit of a split up between Williamson and Mottram. I'm not sure because of alcohol with one of the particular parties, but I won't mention it. Um, anyway, Cecil Mottram, then as managing director, formed Mottram Biscuits. Manufacturing company, Mottram and Sons. His son, Walter, who had obtained his diploma of, at Roseworthy Agricultural College, which I didn't realise was going back in the 19, 1800s, was sent to England to work for Alfred Hugh and Hughes and Co., a biscuit manufacturer, to gain experience in biscuit manufacturing and to find out about the latest machinery. He returned to Adelaide just before the First World War to become the works manager. Then a large parcel of land was purchased between Guja and Grote Streets, which was just next door to the what is now the Shell service station on West Terrace. And a new manufacturing facility was built and started in 1919. Philip Mottram, our grandfather, after leaving school, studied electrical engineering. In the early 1900s, he also uh, went to England and worked for British Westinghouse Electrical and Manufacturing Company, spending two years in the electrical machinery manufacturing and testing department. For another year, he was engaged in London on electrical tramway construction contracts for the London County Council. He returned in Adelaide to Adelaide in 1909 to become a lecturer at the School of Mines and Adelaide University. In 1920, Philip joined his father and brother in the biscuit manufacturing business. I think he was told he had to, had to along with a sister, Gertrude, who was told she should not marry, but stay home to look after Cecil and Ada, as you did in those days. An article in the news paper uh, in 1926, prominent among the displays of Australian products in the shop windows of the city of suburban grocers are the biscuits manufactured by a well-known Adelaide firm, Messrs. Mottram and Sons Limited. Consumers have found that these biscuits excel in quality, firmness and crispness, and contain the very best ingredients obtainable, almost all of which are grown or manufactured in Australia. Over 500 varieties of biscuits are manufactured, especially noted are the cracknels, mill wafers, milk arrowroot, which I must admit were advertised with a woman holding her child, a young child, trying to eat a milk arrow biscuit, and coffee, while the crisp, flaky cream crackers are cooked to perfection and ex unexcelled in popularity for richness of food value. Without or without butter and cheese for lunches, Suppers, they will be found excellent. It was also reported in the news, millions of biscuits at Mottram's. 50 years experience as a manufacturer of biscuits is recorded of Mr. C.A. Mottram, Managing Director of Mottram and Sons. The experience is reflected in the high quality of the products of the spacious factory. Modern machines and methods are a monument to the business enterprise of the firm since its inception. Today, Mottram and Sons compute the daily output in tonnes. The name has become a household word throughout the state. Prior to the 1950s, biscuits were sold to the grocery stores loosely packed in large tins. 
these pictures are the labels off those tins. And uh, I must admit, I went after, after our father died, I found these in his collection of memorabilia, and they are the original hand-painted uh, tin labels. These tins were returnable, cleaned, and relabeled. So no rubbish like today with cartons and packaging. Consumers bought their biscuits in half pound and pound lots, whereby grocer would weigh them out and pack them in brown paper bags. With the advent of supermarkets in the 1950s, biscuits began to be packed by the manufacturer, ready for sale, just as they are presented today. So more, a couple of more labels. Mottram's Picnic, 1928. On, a Saturday, the, on Saturday, the mem it's reported in the news once again. Now, on Saturday, the members of Messrs. Mottram and Sons Social and Welfare Club had their annual picnic at Bridgewater Reserve. The morning was occupied by the cricket match, married versus single men, resulting in a close finish, a six runs margin, in favour of the single men. After lunch, sports program created. Much interest until tea time. The events included 100 yards handicap, 75 yards handicap girls, hop, step and jump, novelty race girls, club Sheffield handicap, skipping girls, three-legged race, the old, buffered, old buffers race, men, married ladies race, the boot race, thread the needle. I remember going to the picnics. These picnics continued every year for many years. I remember going to these picnics each year as a child in the 1950s and being in the three-legged race and other events. This was a wonderful day and all the factory staff, sales staff, mechanics, etc. attended. The relationship between the staff and the manager was something that many companies today would envy. Just diverting for a minute, I remember as a school kid, uh, school holidays, I went on the delivery truck from uh, Adelaide out to Elizabeth. And my father had told Charlie Atkins, the driver, that after delivering the biscuits, would he please park the truck behind the Old Spot Hotel as he was taking Mr Ross Arnott out there and it wouldn't look good if the Arnott's truck was parked out the front. So, along came a fellow called John Mottram, our father, son of Philip, was educated at Scotch College and started work for Henry Berry & Co. After five years, he travelled to England in 1935, gaining experience in biscuit manufacturing with T&T Vickers, installing plant at Weston's Biscuit Factory in Slough. On his return from England, he joined the company operated by his grandfather, father and uncle as a representative of the, on the sales staff. Our father made the following comment regarding the plants used making biscuits. In Adelaide, we had three 26-inch intermittent cutting machines which deposited biscuits on pans, which in turn were manually fed into a 50-foot travelling ovens fired by coal and coke. After baking the pans, were manually removed from the ovens, placed on racks to cool, and then placed on tables in front of girls, and I suppose I should say women because they were women, but they were always called girls in those days, who packed the biscuits. Whereas in the Westerns factory, they installed one continuous cutting embossing machine and one rotary plant which in turn both fed 150 foot gas fired ovens in which they were, there were 32 solid steel bands made from Swedish steel, special. The machines deposited the biscuits on steel bands which conveyed them through the ovens during which time the biscuits were cooked then stripped off the bands, deposited onto cooling ovens after which they went onto stacking machines from which the girls packed the biscuits. During the Second World War, 
All the biscuit manufacturers throughout Australia had a quota of army biscuits to manufacture in proportion to their plant's ability to produce them. The allocation was made by a council of biscuit manufacturers of which Mr Jeff Arnott was the chairman and Mr Phil Mottram was a member. And it was whilst working on the council that a friendship developed between the two families. Likewise, with with the, uh, the Morrow family of Queensland and the Mills family in West Australia. In 1950, Arnott's Biscuits purchased 49% stake in Mottram's Biscuits. In 1952, the company name was changed to Arnott Mottram Proprietary Limited. Then in 1960, Arnott's purchased an, the other 51% of our company. Our father also wrote, we are now very proud of our completely rebuilt factory at Marlston with the latest equipment which enables us to produce the highest quality biscuits for sale on this extremely competitive market. To produce a quality article like ours, you have to ex exercise care and testing and selecting the right materials. Possibly our biggest variable ingredient is flour. Is flour. Consequently, two members of our staff are fully qualified cereal chemists. Not cereals, other things. Cereal, as in cereal. We firmly believe there is no substitute for quality. Having in mind, quality is the group or combination of characteristics that distinguish one product from another or the goods of one manufacturer from that of competitors. The quality of raw materials largely determines the quality of the finished product. In our industry, wherever possible, we purchase raw materials which are South Australian in origin. We use 50 tonnes of wheat products weekly. This is most probably back in the 1950s. One tonne of butter weekly, 30,000 pounds of cheese yearly, 80,000 pounds of egg pulp or 60,000 dozen eggs yearly, 100 tonnes of dried fruit yearly, 100 million cubic feet, 1 million, sorry, 1 million cubic feet of coal gas monthly, as well as a large quantities of electric power. So along came men's biscuits. In, in 1849, John Menz and Magdalena Lass arrived in Adelaide from Hamburg. They married in the Holy Trinity Church on North Terrace later that year. Menz was an architect, but instead of returning to his profession, he established a bakery on Wakeful Street, opposite the uh, now uh, fire brigade in 1850. Here he baked bread, cakes and biscuits, and also sold groceries. Menz died in 1856 and Magdalena continued the business. The men's sons, William and August, joined the business when they were old enough. And after William took over the firm in 1867, the company began trading as W. Menz & Co. In 1885, W. Menz & Co. built a new plant on, in Wayful Street to increase the company's biscuit production. And in 1892, the company expanded into manufacturing confectionery. In 1910, the men's plant expanded, again to increase the production of chocolate. In 1914, it was resolved to sell the bread-making plant and concentrate on confectionery making and biscuits. I mean, Arnott's did used to make, um, not men's, men's used to make uh, uh, Easter eggs and oh, unbelievable the amount of confectionery they used to make. In 1850, 1953, production of most men's products had moved to larger premises at Marlston. Old Herman Men's, who was a member of this club, had bought an arm orchard down there and he turned it into a biscuit plant. The biscuit manufacturing arm of W. Men's and Co. was sold to Arnott's in 1962. And by 1979, after a series of takeovers and mergers, the company was known as Arnott Mottram Men's. In 1992, the men's confectionery was bought by South Australian dried fruit and confectionery company Roeburn, which has now become Roeburn Men's. 
after Arnhem Mott from Men's was taken over by the American company Campbell's, Campbell Soups. Some well-loved men's products still produced by Robin Men's include Crown Mints and Fruit Chocks. Arnett still makes yo-yo biscuits, a long-time South Australian favourite invented by W Men's & Co. According to Arnott's, South Australians consume more than one million packets of honey-flavoured yo-yo biscuits per a year. Many South Australians were upset when Arnott's announced that yo-yos would be removed from their family assorted packets in 1997. When the decision was made that the selection of biscuits would be the same throughout Australia, the yo-yo was just not popular enough countrywide to survive in the mix of the variety pack. So, the Arnott's group. By the late 1970s, Arnott's had taken over most of the biscuit manufacturers in Australia. Besides Mottram's and Men's, they had acquired Mills in Perth, Morrow's in Brisbane, and Guests in Melbourne, and Swallow and Aerials in Melbourne, and I think also Sunshine Biscuits. Arnott's now had 80% of the biscuit trade in Australia, something most probably wouldn't be allowed today. The, the, the bakery on the right hand side, oh, my right, yeah, the left hand side, oh, that side anyway. Uh, uh, the bakery at Ma in Marlston, which is still there today, I, I, unfortunately I couldn't get intro into the bakery even though I'm a son of a, you know, Mottram, didn't make any difference. As South Australia is to thank for many of Australia's favourite biscuits, including wagon wheels, TV snacks and the hard to beat mint slice. In 2021, the site produced 13.2 million kilograms of biscuits and 8.6 million kilograms of, of Aussie-made chocolate. In line with their broader sustainability commitments, the Marlston Bakery is committed to local sourcing, procuring a large proportion of their wheat locally, including around 4,000 tonnes from Kangaroo Island and approximately 2,000 tonnes from mainland South Australia. Arnus was floated on the ASX in 1970. In 1997, Campbell Soup Company purchased the company. Then in 2019, the company was bought by another American company, the private equity firm Kohlberg, Kravis and Roberts. Arnus Biscuits Holdings Proprietary Limited is a foreign-owned private company deriving revenue from the manufacture and distribution of biscuits, soup, stock and vegetable juices. The company employs approximately 3,100 people, operates in Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, Singapore and Hong Kong, and is administered by its head office in North Strathfield, New South Wales. Arnest Biscuits exports products to over 40 countries, the company divides its operations into the following categories. Chocolate biscuits, brands include Tim Tams, Mint Slice, Family Chocolate, Wagon Wheels, TV Snacks. Sweet biscuits, and it provides a range of biscuit varieties, which include plain, creams, assorted and fancy fruit. Brands include Teddy, Tiny Teddy, Delicious Creams and Fancy Favourites. Crackers. Uh, brands such as Save Savoy, Plain ch Crackers, Flavoured Crackers and Jats. Savoury Biscuits include such as Shapes and Crisp Bread. Brands include v Vita Wheat, Cruscuits and Salada. So when you are feeling a little peckish, have an Arnott's Biscuit. <laughs> Thank you. David will come up and take the answers to questions. Well, that was fantastic going down on memory lane um, about the Mottram biscuits. What I've picked up from that is uh, your forefathers were incredibly entrepreneurial and very risk averse in such uh, challenging times in the late 1800s and early 1900s. I love the fact that you set up industry in the CBD, that's quite amazing, and that you saw South Australian produce, which was a logistics nightmare just in the quantities that you were producing. And you sort of had a social conscience with your annual picnic. 
Um, I also learnt I think your favourites might be mint slice. <laughs> He's got too many to choose from. And hands up if you like yo-yo biscuits. <laughs> so still going. So thank you very much for that today. We'll just throw open to a few questions. Does somebody have a question for the Mottram brothers? Over here. Thank you. Thank you for that, Rob <coughs> and David. Uh, are there any of the original Mottram recipes still in use today, as far as you know? Uh, yes. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a, a tin trunk at home with uh, an enormous amount of mem memorabilia. In fact, I, I, bought a, I bought a profit and loss from Mottram Williams son, dated 1894. A one sheet profit and loss statement written by Howard should have brought it up to that stage. It's in the front. Um, and uh, we've got an enormous amount of stuff. You, t you ask about uh, recipes, yes, there are. And I've, I've got a whole book of recipes, all written by hand. And it was a. That's the. Uh, that, it's, it's magnificent. If, uh, I mean, you can, you can pass it around and have a look at it. But, the, uh, the capital account for. For Cecil Mottram was three hundred and forty-seven dollars pounds. So, um, <laughs> and when you look at those recipes, there was a hundred weight of this and a hundred weight of that, and uh, so many pounds of that. You know, it was, it's in, they're, they're massive things. These recipes. So, yeah, we've we got an enormous amount of memorabilia. Uh, I don't really know what to do with it. We're, we're still trying to catalogue it all, but. I, I, I probably it's, it's got to all go to the library. I'm not sure what we'll do in the end, but uh, it's all there. So we come round to your place for biscuits. <laughs> do you cook? <laughs> uh, thank you, Rob and David and other members of the family for putting this together. Uh, the University of Melbourne actually has a commercial archive where it puts together the development of commercial activities in Australia. And it may well be that you'll find uh, some empathy for uh, a depository there uh, for the sorts of things you've just been telling us. <laughs> uh, I, I must admit, when uh, Dad died, I went through a lot of gear and I found, as I said, the biscuit labels and I dished out all these hand-painted biscuit uh, tin labels to the various grandchildren, and brother and sister. And uh, then I found another gear which I gave to, back to the, I gave to the University of Adelaide, which they quite appreciated it. And I gave back some of the other stuff back to Arnott's, uh, or the factory. So I, I'm not sure, yes, we could take that up. Yeah, sure. We have time for two very quick questions, one from David, one from Jill. Thank you. Uh, and thanks, Rob and David. Um, I just wonder if you could share a little bit more about the family history and, and Rotary, because you did touch on it with your grandfather, but I know it's very deep and there's a lot of associated members, uh, sort of mem uh, relatives as well. So could you just expand on that a bit? Uh, well, uh, Philip Mottram joined the Rotary Club in 18, uh, 1925. Um, my father uh, in 1957, I think, and me in 78, and David in whenever he retired, 2001, 2001 a new member. Um, and my daughter, she's a member of the Rotary Club of, uh, an e-club in, in West Australia, where, and she, uh, even though she lives on the Sunshine Coast. It's interesting, my son is Philip, and, he, and his great-grandfather is Philip. His great-grandfather's electrical engineer, Philip's electrical engineer. And back in about uh, 2012, Philip, uh, working for Connor Wagner, then uh, was asked to go and re do re-engineering of the whole factory at Marlston, which was rather quite interesting, actually, that the, this bot from Sun was there as an electrical engineer, which his grandfather was, and was going down to that factory and doing the re-engineering of the factory. Um, 
Thank you very much for that fascinating trip down memory lane. Mine is more a cheeky, light-hearted memory. Um, a lot of people would probably remember when biscuits were dispensed by the local grocer in a brown paper bag, and the broken biscuits were always cheaper. I remember that. But my mother used to tell the story of her mother, who was a widow during the war, and of course everything was rationed. And being a widow, she used to get an extra scoop of biscuits if she held the grocer's hand. <laughs> Can I say, I, I remember, I remember my father, sorry about that Jill, but uh, it, it's a, it, was, it was quite common, uh, the, the broken biscuits from the factory itself were always gathered together and they were, they were used as pig feed and they, and they were given down, I remember at one stage they were being, there was a pig farm somewhere down the southeast. And the broken biscuits were going down there and being used as pig feed. However, some entrepreneurial fella decided your mother needed some, some broken biscuits. So he decided to sell these broken biscuits. And so then that had to stop. They had to either be crushed up totally because, you know, people were, were using the... And they weren't obviously what they should be. So there we go. Uh, thank you. Rob and David, thank you so much for your talk today. It's very enlightening. I think everyone's got a smile on their face thinking about all the biscuits. Um, this is a certificate of appreciation to you both for your contribution to Rotary today and for our community projects. And you get your very own Rotary mascot. You've got to hang on to it, put it by your pillow. <laughs>